I demonstrate an alternative method for crafting a hollow clay ring, combining hand building techniques with the potter's wheel. Using white earthen red clay, I begin by rolling out a slab approximately 6 mm thick. To ensure an even slab, I employ wooden guides of the desired thickness. For efficient rolling, I recommend periodically flipping and rotating the clay. Note that after flipping the slab, I smooth out the fabric to prevent wrinkles, which could leave imprints on the surface later on. Next, we transition the rolled clay slab onto the potter's wheel surface aiming to center it evenly. Starting the porter's wheel at medium speed, we use a damp sponge to gently smooth out the slab if needed. Then, employing a potter's needle, it's crucial to keep your hands steady in one position as you slowly lower the needle to create the outer edge. Lower the needle until it pierces the clay and reaches the metal base on the wheel. Stop the wheel and remove the trimmed piece. To ensure consistent ring size in the future, I recommend measuring and notice all dimensions thorough the crafting process. Moving forward, we measure the approximate thickness and create an inner hole in the same manner using the needle, removing excess clay afterward. Then we begin shaping the walls by gently lifting the outer edge of the circle by about 2 cm and repeating the procedure around the circumference. Slightly compressing the top part helps prevent it from collapsing back onto the flat surface due to the clay's moist and soft consistency. Once finished with the outer edge, we work on the inner part of the ring using the same method. Working from the inside is more efficient and there is no need for compressing the upper layer. I measure all diameters once again and let the ring dry. Carefully I transfer it onto a wooden surface and leave it aside while I work on the second half. In the same manner I create the second, absolutely identical part. Now it's time to assemble the two parts into one complete ring. Both pieces are currently in a leather hard 
state. Before gluing, I do a trial fitting to adjust any size differences. Once the size roughly match, I begin the gluing process. For this, I use pre-prepared slip made from the same clay. Effective gluing requires precise technique and sequence. It's essential to slightly soften and prepare the gluing areas. Firstly, I cover both edges with slip to moisten the dried edges. Then I meticulously apply fairly deep crosshatch score marks on both surfaces to be glued. Next, I take fresh clay and create a coil about 7 mm thick along the circumference of one of the halves, smearing the inner part of the coil to join it with the base. I place the second half over the fresh clay, press gently and start smoothing everything out to transform it into a cohesive whole. I work on the visible seams using a metal rib, then fill the seams with soft clay. Similarly, I refine the inner seam. Placing the ring in the center of the potter's wheel, I moisten the surface with a heavily dampened sponge. Cut, cut, cut. Placing the ring in the center of the potter's wheel, I moisten the surface with a heavily dampened sponge. I leave the ring in a plastic bag overnight to allow the fresh clay to slightly dry. Using small pieces of clay, I center the ring on the wheel and begin trimming. Employing a rounded profile trimming tool, I carefully shave off thin layers from the surface, removing any unevenness. During trimming, 
I alternate between different tools to achieve the best results. You can easily find such tools at any ceramic supply store. It's crucial at this stage not to trim too aggressively to avoid thinning the walls too much. With the ring ready, I proceed to shape it into a vase, moistening the side that will become the vase's bottom. I soften the clay slightly. Using a flat wooden paddle, I flatten the bottom and place the future vase on the table, allowing gravity to naturally shape the bottom. On the potter's wheel, I create the neck for the vase to be. Comment below if you're interested in learning more about throwing techniques. Now I'll join the neck and the base of the vase. Using a metal ring, I make cuts on both sides and adjust the neck to size. I create a hole in the base and glue both parts together. I meticulously work on the seam to ensure it's not noticeable. To remove bumps and excess clay, I use a metal rib with serrated edges. Finally, I use a rubber rib to completely smooth the surface. The final surface treatment involves using a damp sponge before drying the object and sanding it for bisque firing. After the first firing, the vase needs to be made waterproof by glazing. I apply the glaze using a brush in the several layers. Usually the number of coats is indicated by the manufacturer on the packaging. I then send the vase for a second firing. This process allows for the creation of ceramic rings of various sizes and their use in creating decor in all imaginable variations. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, ask questions in the comments and subscribe to my channel.